Okay, so now we know how the infrared spectra come about and how we determine them, we're going to need to know how to interpret them. So we know that it is due to different vibrational modes in covalent molecule bonds. So let's have a look at what this looks like and what information we can get from these spectra. The troughs in the graph occur at the wavelengths for which IA radiation is absorbed and is known as absorption bands. The units that we see this being reported in are wave numbers and we do have to give this unit when we are reporting the frequency that we see. So these are wave numbers which is centimetres to the negative one. When we would describe this, we don't need to be able to specify the vibrational change that causes these, so we don't have to talk about stretching or bending. But we can say here at approximately 3,000 centimetres to the negative one, there is a stretch that corresponds to the CH of the molecule, okay? And this is looking at ethanol. One of the other ones that we can see here is this one at just above 1000, 1050. This is characteristic of a CO. Again, this is in the fingerprint region, so it's not what we'd go to straight away, but it can help to confirm. The clearest one that we would look for in this for ethanol is going to be the OH alcohol stretch and we do need to specify when answering questions for VCAR that it is the OH alcohol or the OH acid and specify which one we're talking about. In this case we're talking about the OH alcohol stretch and it is at approximately 3670 wave numbers. In order to get the approximate one we're going to drop a line down from the middle of the peak using a ruler clearly and then estimate the wave numbers from here. You will see that these are reported as ranges within your data booklet so this isn't an exact science. They do move a little bit and we give the approximate wave number that we measure this absorbance at. So if we have a look here, we look at propanoic acid and methyl ethanoate. They have the same molecular formula. These are functional group isomers of each other, but the structures are different. We would see, expect to see a peak at around 1700 wave numbers for the carbonyl in each of them. This would be characteristic. However, we will see an OH stretch for the acid that would not be present in the ester. So sometimes when we're looking for characteristic stretches, we're looking for the absence of them rather than the, the presence of it, if you get what I mean. So for propanoic acid, we would expect up above 3000 wave numbers to see an OH acid stretch. This would not be present in the methyl ethanoate spectrum. And if we look at these spectrums, this is exactly what we see. We can see here for the propanoic acid at around 1700, 1750 wave numbers, we see a characteristic stretch of the C double bond O. And we see that also in this one here that corresponds to the methyl ethanoate. If you were to look down here, we also have the characteristic CO stretch. Again, we can just use that as extra information, but not something that we would go to automatically. We see the CH um, peaks here, and we will see multiple of them because there are more than one CH in the molecule um, in the methyl ethanoate, but there's no other characteristic absorbances up above 3000. However, if we look at the propanoic acid one, the CH peak is actually being swamped by this broad jagged stretch, which is characteristic of an OH acid. Okay, Every time we have an OH acid, we will see this large, and it's described as like a large beard-like stretch. So it's broad, it's jagged, it over swamps, it overtakes the CH stretch here. And this is very characteristic of an OH acid. So for the propanoic acid, we can clearly see that we have the C double bond O, CH and OH stretches present in our molecule. Whereas for methyl ethanoate, we have the C double bond O and CH with the absence of the OH acid peak. And we can see that these spectra are clearly different from one another. 
So when we were describing this, we would say that in methyl ethanoate, the absorption just below 3000 wave numbers is due to the CH bond. In propanoic acid, the broad absorption band from 2700 to 3600 would be due to the OH, and please remember to specify OH acid stretch, partly masking the absorption due to the CH. The C double bond O stretch in propanoic acid produces a peak at a different wave number from the C double bond O in the methyl ethanoate, but they are both within the same region of around 1700 to 1750 wave numbers. When we look at ketones, this is another C double bond O that can turn up. Again, it will be in a slightly different area, but this strong absorption below 2000, between 1500 and 2000 is going to be characteristic of a C double bond O. So we will see this for a number of different functional groups. If we increase the structural complexity, we get increased spectral complexity, i.e. we will see more lines for the more bonds that will undergo transitions with infrared radiation. If we have a look at this one here with vanillin, we can see we have an aldehyde, we have an ether, and we have an OH. This will be our OH alcohol stretch here above 3000, which is much sharper than what we see for an OH acid. Here we will have our aldehyde C double bond O. We will also see peaks here for the CHs from our benzene ring and various other things. And then as you can see here, our fingerprint region gets a lot more complex. We look at hexine. Here we can see that we have the CH stretches, but we get this new peak up here, which is the C triple bond C. When you are talking about these, be specific and don't just say the C triple bond or the triple bond. Be specific and say the carbon carbon triple bond. Okay. Or when you write it out, specify carbon triple bond carbon okay so that we're telling the examiners we know specifically where that triple bond is some of the peaks in the spectrum are narrow this generally means that the peak corresponds to one particular type of vibration and bond as the more vibrational modes are present we will get overlapping of those like we see in the carboxylic acid oh region and these broad bands occur due to combinations of different absorption frequencies that overlap each other. Just a note on quantitative analysis, we can use IR spectroscopy for quantitative, it is very rarely done um, because the peak we need to select a specific peak in the spectrum and then measure the change in the transmittance that we see. We get an increase when we increase the concentration, just as what we saw with AAS, okay, and UV vis. Calibration curves need to be done to do these, and they're rarely linear, so they're harder to interpret than other methods of spectroscopy that we've seen, such as UV vis and AAS. Okay, so generally, IR is used as a qualitative technique, and certainly this is what we will see its majority of uses done in the VCE course. Let's have a look at a couple more examples, because really it's good to see how these patterns start to arise. We can see here that we have the speak for ethanol, and this is a more characteristic exhaustion that we tend to see for an alcohol, which is often referred to as a tongue. You can notice it doesn't have the jagged appearance that the beard of the carboxylic acid has. It is higher than the carboxylic acid. It will be up closer to 3,500 than the peak being down here at 3,000, which is what would be characteristic of a carboxylic acid. We can also see that we have no strong strong peak for the um, C double bond O appearing in this spectrum. If we look at propan 1-ol, we have less complexity in our fingerprint region, okay, um, sorry, more complexity in our fingerprint region, but we still have this characteristic OH alcohol, and we have the CHs present as we would expect for propan 1-ol. But there's not really much more information that we can derive from these two spectra other than that they are part of the alcohol family and that they contain no C double bond O. 
If we look at these two compounds, X and Y, one of them we are told is a carboxylic acid and the other is an alcohol. Pause the video and see if you can tell from what we've talked about which would be which and have a go at justifying your answer. Then come back and see what I have to say. Okay, hopefully you had a look at these two peaks and let's look at the characteristic things that we're looking for. If we have a carboxylic acid, we will be looking for the presence of a C double bond O, which will be a strong absorption around 1500 to 1750. We would also expect to see the OH acid stretch at around 3000 wave numbers. In the case of an alkanol, we can expect, because we haven't been told that it has a, carb, a ketone or anything like that, so we're just looking for the alcohol, we would expect an OH alcohol at um, above, so greater than 3000 wave numbers. It would be less jagged than the carboxylic acid, and we would have no C double bond O stretch at around 1700. So when we look at these two spectra, we can see here that we have a clear CH at 3000. We have, this is our fingerprint region here. We have no peak in this region here, so there's no C double bond O. And we do indeed have a smooth, strong, stretch at greater than 3000. So the prediction would be that this will be our alkanol. If we have a look at this one, we have a broad peak that is jagged that is coming over the CH. So this is going to be our OH acid. And we do indeed see a strong sharp peak at around 1750 which is characteristic of our carboxylic acid C double bond O. So this certainly confirms that this is likely to be the carboxylic acid. So X is going to be our carboxylic acid um, molecule, while Y is going to be the alcohol. These kind of things, you will notice we see the same patterns over and over and over again. We want to identify the absorption bands that are obvious and correspond to absorption bands in the IR spectrum from the data table in our data book. Identify the functional groups that are likely to be present and justify that with reference to the wave numbers that we see them. Again, here we can see on this spectrum, the unidentified compound we're told is C2H4O2, which means that as soon as I see O2, I need to be thinking of my functional groups that contain two oxygens. It could be a carboxylic acid, it could be an ester, okay, or it might be two diols, something like that. So two alcohols forming a diol. If we go to the spectrum, we can see here that it has a strong absorption at around 1700, which is going to be our C double bond O. And again, we have this broad jagged peak, which is going to be our OH of the acid group. So this would indicate that it is a carboxylic acid molecule that is given rise to this spectrum. The best way to do this is practice, and we will do lots of practice in class. I suggest you have a go at looking at page 379 and 380 just to have a look at what the questions are like, and we will do some workshopping of this in class when next I see you. Good luck.